We're back and we're prepping like never before. Now this, I've got to tell you, this was the most nicely packaged grocery item I've ever gotten. I know I have people asking me about this all the time. So that's why I love these. This is 10,000 um, mega amp hours, milliamp hours. It's 10,000 whatever those things are. I should look that up. Hey guys, it's Jero with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We have had a very exciting week. We took a little trip, and then when we got back home to Maine, we actually reached 50,000 subscribers. So thank you to each and every one of you who has hit that subscribe button. We are so thankful for all of you. I would love it if you would let us know down in the comment section what part of the country or the world you're watching from today. Today's video is a nod to what got this channel started, which is our prepper pantry hauls. Whether you've just started prepping or you've been at it for years, it's important to remember there is no finish line. It's not a race, it's a journey. So no matter what pace you're able to take and what distance you have to go, it's not something that you start and finish. We're always building, always learning, growing, adapting, and most importantly, rotating. So we are always adding to our preps and our food storage. And once you've built it to a certain point, You'll have kind of a home grocery store and supply depot. And once you get to that point, you'll find that not only will you be prepared for emergencies of all kinds, but it will also save you time and save you money. So it's really a win-win situation. So let's get right into it and see what we added to our preps and our prepper pantry this week. So here is a quick overview of everything. Down at the end, I have something that people ask me about probably more than just about anything else on the channel. So make sure you stay tuned to see what that's all about. So I'm going to start right over here, and this is all my Amazon stuff. Now this, I've got to tell you, this was the most nicely packaged, probably, grocery item I've ever gotten. It came in this nice box with a sticker and some paper, and this is individual packets of ghee, which I was really kind of excited to find, because if you watch the channel, you know that I do a lot of meals in a bag, for example, where everything you need for the whole meal is included in the bag. So if you need oil to saute or anything like that, um, that's kind of tricky to do. So I thought that this would be a really great option for that. So I got a box of these and this could also be great to carry around um, in a bug out bag or when you're traveling or anything, anytime that you might need just single servings of ghee. And next, this is the one thing here that's not from Amazon, but I didn't really have a section for it. These are actually from Target. And this is a mild Chicago style Jardinera, which I use, um, Pretty much the only thing I use this in is my Italian beef, which I did make a video on, but I don't think I've gotten it edited for you guys. I canned it. Um, I canned my Italian beef, but I can't find this style of Jardinera anywhere around me. So I have to order it. So I have gotten it from Amazon before, and this was from Target. And next, some dry and powdered ingredients. Now this is from Hoosier Hill Farms. This is one of their cheese sauces. Um, you might remember a few weeks ago, a month or two ago, I got several of the other flavors of these. This is the jalapeno cheddar. They've got about four or five flavors. I think these are fairly new to them because I had never seen them before. This is just a Just Add Water sauce mix. And this is something that I think will be great to use in my meals in a jar and also just to have in the prepper pantry to be able to make a cheese sauce or use in recipes. This is gluten-free, no GMOs. And of course, Hoosier Hill Farm is right here in the United States. And they did... Um, give you instructions for soup, sauce, or dip um, ratios right on the side. I'm excited to try this in some meals in a jar. And next I've got some buttermilk powder. This is used more in baking mixes in a jar, pretty much. I use this in my Just Add Water cornbread mix, for example. But anytime that you need buttermilk and you don't have buttermilk, you can also make it if you have fresh milk using vinegar or lemon juice. But this is also a good substitute. You can just add this powder right to your recipe and then the appropriate amount of water. And next I got some more um, apple cider vinegar powder. This is a big bag and this is from Modernist Pantry. This is 14 ounces. This is the brand I've had before, but I've bought it in the smaller bags and I really do like it. So this time I bought a larger bag. I recently used this in my sweet and sour chicken meal in a jar to make the sweet and sour sauce. I use apple cider vinegar in a lot of recipes. So if I'm going to convert those recipes to um, meals in a jar, I need apple cider vinegar powder for those. I love this brand. Now, as a side note, I did try, I did test this Judy's brand as well, because I know I've mentioned to you that sometimes with these powdered ingredients, different brands can give you different results. I know I've had 
different results when I've switched brands with sour cream powder and cream cheese powder and things like that. This brand of cider vinegar powder I did test in the same recipe and Mr. Wicked Prepared said he couldn't tell the difference. So these are both good. I am really partial to this brand. They have all sorts of cool stuff, but if you check out this package, this company is actually right here in Maine, just like we are. So I'm very partial to this company. Next, I have some seasonings. Seasonings are always important in your prepper pantry because you don't want to get tired of eating the same old thing. You want to be able to spice things up and make all sorts of different dishes. And you can use different seasonings to make your same basic beans, rice, canned meats, canned vegetables into many different dishes. This is something called Dano's. I just kept seeing ads for this seasoning and I, I guess I'm a sucker because I was like, I've got to try it. So I found this, it was a five pack. It came as a set of five on Amazon. So I get to try all these different um, flavors. And I never realized until it, it showed up that it's actually low sodium. I did not realize this was a low sodium seasoning, but it looks like it's gonna be really good. And of course, this is another one of the um, sausage seasonings. I've gotten several other varieties of this before. Now I could use this to make my own sausage and I may do that at some point, but I also got this to be able to just add a little bit of extra flavor um, to recipes or say I had some plain ground pork, plain ground turkey, plain ground beef, something that I needed to use up and I didn't have the sausage that I would typically use. I can season that meat up um, just to be like the sausage. So this pork sausage seasoning, I believe this is a breakfast sausage mix. I've gotten Italian sausage um, seasonings before and they have lots of other varieties. And this little bag actually seasons 25 pounds of meat and these are less than $10. I think they're around $8 usually these bags. So that's, I feel like that's a really good deal. And then I got another two pack of the Johnny Scarlet. I really like the seasoning. This is a great sort of garlic Parmesan type of seasoning. And I like to put this in a lot of things. So I grabbed another two pack. These are really, really big um, jars. This will last quite a while. Right here I do have, these are some uh, tortellinis, but they're the dry shelf stable tortellinis. And I'm going to be using these in some jar meals. I have a creamy tortellini lasagna soup that I wanted to make into a jar meal. So I grabbed a few of these. And next I've got a bunch of canned goods by the case. Now I have found a lot of the time it's cheaper for me to buy these things by the case at Amazon, especially like these Campbell's soups. Now, depending on what grocery stores you have in your area, you might be able to find sales at your stores that would get you these cheaper if you keep an eye out for sales but we don't have a lot in our area to choose from and we don't tend to have a lot of great sales and so it's cheaper for me to go to amazon and get a case and you'll find as you build your prepper pantry and you're rotating things like you should be you'll be shopping out of your prepper pantry a lot more you'll be shopping out of your food storage and so that really allows you to put your resources into buying things in bulk a lot more often and saving some money that way. So in the long run, it takes a while to build up your food storage, but once you get that built, then it's gonna start saving you time and saving you money. But what I have here is I have two cases of these Vienna Bites. These are the chicken ones, I believe, because they were cheaper than the regular ones. At the time that I ordered these, I have these on my subscribe and save. At the time that I ordered these, they were cheaper, quite a bit cheaper per can than buying them at Dollar Tree or anywhere else. I do think the price might have gone back up. Always keep an eye on the prices and keep an eye out for coupons. Sometimes Amazon will have little coupon boxes that you can check off that make for some really great deals. But these are just a good little protein source, a good little snack. Um, my daughter's been eating quite a lot of these, so I raised up the amount that I'm adding into our pantry. And then these are eight ounce cans of pineapple, crushed pineapple. I have a recipe, my pineapple banana bread that uses these cans. And I cannot find these cans, these eight ounce cans of crushed pineapple at my store anymore. So I started getting these from Amazon this is a case of SpaghettiOs, if you can see that. So far for me, it's been cheaper for me to buy this case of the name brand. It ends up being cheaper per can than buying the Walmart brand of the same thing. So I'm going to go for the name brand anytime if I can get it for cheaper or the same price. And this here is just a case of like a vegetarian meat substitute. This is the Loma Linda brand. I grew up, um, I spent several years of my childhood as a vegetarian. Um, just because my family was a vegetarian. And so we ate a lot of this stuff. My mom made beef stroganoff out of these that I absolutely loved. So I have a fond memory for these. I haven't had them in many, many years, but my daughter has decided she's going to eat vegetarian now. So I got these thinking of her, but I can't wait to try them again and kind of bring me back to my childhood. And then of course the Campbell's soups. I love using Campbell's soups in my cooking. I know not everyone likes to do that. If you don't like to do that, that's fine. You can make your own substitutes for these kind of things. I think I am the reincarnation of a 1950s housewife because I love cooking with Campbell's soup. So I've got cream of onion here, a beefy mushroom. This one is a cream of celery. I was a little bit disappointed that this case came taped up and so the tape kind of stuck to one of the cans. I tried to spin it around so you could see it, but that's cream of celery. 
and golden mushroom. These are some of my less often used, you know, I tend to use the cream of mushroom, cream of chicken a lot more often, tomato soup. These are ones I use less frequently, but I'm running low on on all of them. So I did stock up on a case of each. Then up here, I've got a few number 10 cans. This is a Mountain House um, scrambled eggs with bacon, freeze dried. I got this because these are already cooked pieces of scrambled egg. I have plenty of scrambled egg mix, which is the powder that you rehydrate with water to make into like a raw scrambled egg and cook up yourself. But when I do my jar meals, there's certain times I would want scrambled egg already cooked like for fried rice, for example. And so I got this to try. Now I could freeze dry my own scrambled eggs and I'm sure at some point I will, but I haven't gotten to it yet. And I do like to try to keep things accessible for everyone, even people who don't have a freeze dryer. So I try to test my recipes with ingredients that you can purchase commercially most of the time. And then this one right here is dehydrated celery. Now, typically when I make my meals in a jar, I use freeze dried ingredients. That really is the best of the best, the cream of the crop, and they have a much longer shelf life usually than dehydrated items. But I've had a lot of people requesting recipes with only dehydrated items, mostly from people who dehydrate their own food and just want some recipes to use with that. So I'm gonna be trying to develop some dehydrated only recipes. The only thing I'm a little bit wary of is dehydrating meats. I know people do it. I've never done it myself. I much prefer freeze dried meats with that. I know the shelf life is longer and I feel like it's a little bit safer. If you've ever dehydrated meats like ground beef or cooked chicken, let me know down in the comments what your experience has been with that and what kind of a shelf life you usually get out of it because I know a lot of the time things will last a lot longer on the shelf than what we are told that they will. So I just wanna know people's experience. I will be trying it pretty soon, I believe, just to be able to offer that option to people in my jar meals. So this one is dehydrated celery and this should just be pieces of the celery stock. And then I got these celery flakes. I think these will come in handy not only for dehydrated meals in a jar, but also for some soup mixes and things like that. I was a little disappointed in this um, that I got. I actually, it's two eight ounce bags. You see the other one right there. So it's a pound of these celery flakes. Um, I'm pretty sure the description on Amazon said it was a combination of cross cut celery stalks and leaves. And this basically looks like just leaves to me. So I was a little bit disappointed in that, but we'll see if we can make use of it. And next I've got a few things that are non-food items from Amazon. This right here is a dispenser for things like hand sanitizer. And I always like to have, I'm not really a germaphobe. I don't like to use hand sanitizer very often, but I think there's times when it has its purpose. You know, if you're at the grocery store during cold and flu season, you're touching things that hundreds of other people have touched or when you're traveling, for example, like we just were. So that's what made me think of it. I wanted something that would clip on the outside of my bag while we were traveling so that I didn't have to fumble inside my bag for things. In my car, I have a pump bottle of hand sanitizer that sits right in the console so I can, I can get a pump of it if I come out of a store without even having to really touch anything. Because to me, that's kind of defeating the purpose. If you have to touch your bag and all of your different things to get into your hand sanitizer, you're just gonna be putting all those germs you're trying to rid yourself of all over all these surfaces. So this is a clip. It took me a minute of fiddling with it to figure out how it works, but this clip clips open. I can't do it with one hand, but this does clip open and you can clip it onto your pants or your belt or your purse or whatever you have. And what I like about this is that it's one-handed operation. You can just do it with one hand easily. It's not the most attractive thing in the world, but sometimes that's not what's important. So I'm going to show you all the different ways you can use this. It is an airless pump, so you can use it in any direction, you know, whether it's facing up or down or sideways, it does come with this straw, which I'm gonna have to figure out how to use, but it comes with instructions that show you all the different ways that you can use this, um, several different one-handed methods of using this. And that's what I was really excited about. Then of course, this is just a flea medicine for the dogs. Um, this is something that I found. I've gotten a, a bottle of the bigger dog version. So you might've seen this in one of my other hauls. If you've ever used Capstar, it's a pill that you give to your dogs or cats and it starts to kill fleas instantly. Within an hour, it kills basically every live flea on their body. It doesn't take the place of a preventative. So you need to use a preventative too, but it can be good if you ever get an infestation or if you bring home like a new animal, if you rescue an animal from somewhere and you don't know what if it has fleas or you know that it has fleas, it can be a good way just to kill everything that's on it and then you follow up with a preventative. This is a different medicine than the Capstar, but it, it's supposed to work the same way and it ends up being a lot cheaper per pill. And what I really like about it is that it's actually a little treat that they want to eat. So the Capstar is like a little pill that you have to shove down their throat somehow, which I just can't stand. So, so I'm switching to this and we do keep this on hand all the time. Like I said, we have six dogs, six cats, 
So obviously we are animal rescuers. We tend to take in animals from random places. So it's just good to have things like this on hand, especially if you were in an emergency situation when veterinary care and other remedies from the store were not available. We try to keep a good backup supply of all of these kinds of things. And now this is one of my favorite power banks. I'm sure you've seen this before in my halls but this one is pink. Now I love these power banks. It's nice and thin. It has uh, cords built into it that are for three different kinds, the iPhone type, the USB-C and the regular USB micro USB. They're built right into it. It has a space to plug in a USB cable if you wanted to charge it that way and a USB-C. So it's got input and output of those, but it also has this built right into it. So you can plug this right into the outlet. So you don't even need a cord, which I love. So you can have this and you don't need any extra cables because that is always the kicker for me is having to carry around the extra cables. So I really love this. It does support pass through charging, meaning I can plug this right into the wall and I can be charging this unit from the wall and charging my phone from this unit at the same time. So this can basically essentially work as a charging block and a charging cable and a portable charger. And you only have to carry this one thin item. So that's why I love these. This is 10,000 um, mega amp hours, milliamp hours. It's 10,000 whatever those things are. I should look that up. Okay, so it's 10,000 milliamp hours. So I get more than one full charge of my Samsung phone off of one of these. So this is a must have for me. Every member of my family has these, but every once in a while we have to replace them. I'm pretty sure that I left my last one plugged right into the wall in the hotel room when we were in Utah. So I had to replace it. And now this is a little, um, it's a fire escape, anti-fire and smoke mask. This is super, super thin. It's like a packet. This can be stashed in a lot of places. Um, sa save lives in the case of earthquake, terror, and fire by offering protection from toxic gases. I have a couple more of these. I keep these um, in my EDC and my vehicle and things like that. I've never opened one up, but I'm pretty sure it's just like a cloth, almost like a disposable wipe that's saturated with a certain kind of solution. And you're to hold it over your mouth and nose if you ever have to escape from fire, which could happen. You never know when you could find yourself in a burning building, in a wildfire. Um, something like when the Twin Towers collapsed, you know all the stuff that was in the air for the people that were in the vicinity. So this could come in handy for a lot of things. These are pretty inexpensive and they're just super thin and easy to keep in a lot of places. Like I said, I have a few of these, but I wanted to get um, a couple more to keep with us for travel because you just never know. This package is notched many different places so that no matter where you try to tear it, it's going to open because you might not be able to see very well. You might be in a panic. So it's important for you to be able to access these things easily. And then this is just a package of Technu individual packets. These are little single serve half ounce packets. Technu is a cleanser for poison ivy. I have several members of my family who are super sensitive to poison ivy and we have a lot of it around our property and a lot of the places that we go. This is a cleanser. If you can wash up with this immediately after you've been exposed, then you will not come down with the rash. And so we live by this stuff. We have bottles of it around, but these packets are so that I can give them to my kids in their little um, individual first aid kits that they carry with them if they're going hiking or anything like that to make sure that we always have this on us. I'm a big fan of individual packets of things, even though they're not the most cost effective way to do things. You use them sparingly, they can last a long time, and they just make sure that you have the things you need with you at all times. Before we move on to the rest of these things, I'm going to take you down to the backyard to show you one more really exciting thing that we've added to our preps lately. We've had it down there because we've been testing it out, and it would have taken up a lot of space on the kitchen counter. This is our brand new Opus Mega 3 portable power station. Guys, I am so bonkers excited about this. This thing is a beast. This thing is huge. I am super excited about this. So this is a portable power station. And then of course, with the addition of solar panels, it becomes a solar generator. The solar panels are going to generate the power that's going to be stored inside the portable power station. Now, those of you that have been watching a while have seen our solar generator kind of journey. We started off with a pretty small unit and actually our first unit was an Opus the first portable power station that we ever got. And we really, really loved it. And we don't just buy things like this and put them away for emergencies, because if you do that, you don't know how it works, how you like it, how to use it, if it has any manufacturing defects that you're going to discover when you pull it out and you need it in an emergency. So we use these things. We use them on our camping trips. We use them around the property 
for areas that we have to work that we don't have power and things like that. So, so we absolutely loved our first Opus. And all along, I know we've said we'd like to get a larger unit. Well, this is 3,600 watts of pure sine wave power here. And not only that, but this has a feature that I've really, really been wanting, and that is that it's expandable. So we don't have any yet, but you can actually get extra battery packs and attach them onto this unit and piggyback them to expand the storage power of this unit by a lot. So as you can see, this is a pretty large unit and it's pretty heavy. So it does have um, carrying handles on both sides. So it could be carried by one or two people. And then it does also have wheels on one end and then a handle right here that pops out. This is an Anderson output. I'm not even sure what this would actually be used for, but it does have the USB outports, USB-C outports right here. Of course, it has all of these regular wall outlets. There's five of these right here, and it actually has a 30 amp um, output right here. This, of course, also has a car charger output here that you can plug in anything that uses this kind of port. Now, always on these generators, they always have a button to turn on that particular type of power. And then of course, the this is the main power button. And then this controls the wireless um, capabilities. So basically you can have this controlled by an app on your phone and it can go through Bluetooth right to the device. But if you actually hook this up to the internet, then you can actually control this unit through the app from anywhere that there's an internet connection. Now, of course, this has a nice flat top, which we've really come to enjoy in our portable power stations. It's just easier for storage. And if you're taking it with you somewhere like on a camping trip, you can actually set things on top of it. If you expand this with extra battery packs, you can set them right up here. This also has feet right here so that it can be tipped up on this end. And of course, this is where you have all the inputs. This is where you can charge it from a wall outlet. And this is where you can charge it from solar panels or your car um, plug. And this actually supports multi-charging all at once and it has a fast and a slow charge mode. So you can charge this whole thing up. This giant beast can be charged up in like one to two hours if you fully utilize the charging capabilities. The slow charging capacity is 900 watts and the fast charging capacity is 1800 watts. And then this down here is where you would start to attach extra battery packs. And this can expand all the way up to a maximum of 15.35 kilowatt hours, which is incredible. This does come with cables for charging. It's got the car charging cable and it's got the house charging cable. Now this unit can be a standalone unit. It doesn't need the solar panels. You could charge this unit from the wall or from your vehicle and use it that way. We prefer to add solar panel stars. So if we find ourselves in a situation where we're without power for an extended period of time, which does happen, Around here we have ice storms and sometimes people are left without power for weeks. And when you purchase the solar panels, you get the cables for charging with the solar panels. That's the one complaint I've really ever heard about Opus is that they don't use the same standard connection for their solar panels that other brands use. But we actually just purchased an adapter cable from Amazon. It probably cost us like 10 bucks so that if we need to, want to, or choose to, we can use any other brand of solar panels with our Opus. But this Opus Mega 3 actually did come with an MC4 to Anderson adapter cable. So that's a big plus. So not only are these mega units on sale for 30% off through the 9th, which is an awesome sale to begin with, but we also have an extra discount code for you to use and it's Wicked Mega. This is going to be valid only through the 9th, through the end of the sale. But we do have a code Wicked Prepared that's good for any of the other items on the website. So I really can't see a better time to buy one of these units if this is something that's been on your list of things you need to add to your preps. So next, I've got my Thrive Life stuff from my September delivery. Now I've got two different sizes of cans. I've got pantry cans here and I've got family cans. You can think of this, these are like a quart size. These are like a gallon size. I tend to like to buy all of my items in the family cans when I can because it's mo usually the most cost effective. But some things only come in the pantry cans and then some things I want in pantry cans for other reasons. Now, if you've never heard of Thrive Life, they sell mostly freeze-dried foods and they are the best hands-down company in the industry. They have absolutely the best quality. All of these things pretty much have a 25-year shelf life. I'm not sure about these seasonings, but these will be gone long before 25 years are up. So what I got here is these are green onions. I did get, um, I did get cases of these pantry cans, which is 10 cans. I didn't put them all up here on the counter because honestly, that would have taken a lot of time to unload them and load them back up into their boxes and it would have taken up a lot of space on the counter. So I put three cans of each, but I got a case of 10. So these are just green onions. These are for meals in a jar, for using in recipes, for garnishing on, on recipes and things like that. 
These are strawberry yogurt bites. I love the yogurt bites. My family loves the yogurt bites. The good thing about freeze drying is when you freeze dry yogurt, it maintains its probiotic properties. It maintains the probiotics. Freeze drying does not kill that off. So these still have the probiotics in them. So they're a super healthy snack. I have also put these in smoothies. I've made smoothies in a jar where I have everything I need for the smoothie right in the mason jar. All I have to do is dump it in a blender with a little bit of water and have a smoothie. So I got a case of these. And then the cherries. These are so delicious just to snack on. I don't have a lot of recipes that use these cherries, but we just love them for snacking. And I have a lot of family members who love these. So I did get a case of the larger cans to have on hand here, but I got a case of the smaller cans to use as gifts. And then next, my seasonings. I do think I got two of each of these, but I only got, grabbed out one to show you because like I said, that would just be way too much if I got everything out. Freeze dried garlic. This is a minced garlic. So these are small pieces but not they're bigger than garlic powder so i love this in a lot of dishes we love garlic here and then the chef's choice is just a multi-purpose seasoning blend but it's got sort of a unique flavor i'm not really sure i can't put my finger on it so i don't really know how to duplicate it so this is a seasoning that we use a lot of and like i said seasonings are super super important because you want to be able to make your food taste good so these four cans here these were the monthly special fruit and vegetable pack for the month of september by the time you see this it will be october so there will be a whole new set of specials but this can be a great way if, if you're not familiar with the way that Thrive Life works, they have monthly specials every month and then they have three really big sales a year. So they did just have their back to school sale and I didn't even put that stuff in a haul because I bought so much, it was a little bit insane. I always buy what's on sale and the bigger the sale, the more I buy. That's just the way to get the most bang for your buck. So for the monthly specials pack, they have a page of specials every month, a new set of specials every month, a collection of things that are on sale that month. And they have a couple of ways that you can get a little bit bigger discount. Number one, if you buy cases of things that are on sale, you're going to get a better price than you are on a single can, buying in bulk, of course. Number two, they have specials packs. So if you don't want a case of anything or a case of everything, you can get the monthly special pantry can pack. And that is every item that's on sale in this size of can, one of every item. And they give you a little bit more of a discount. So that's a really great way if you're just getting started. It's a great way to try out a wider variety of items in a shorter amount of time for less money. And then what you can do is take your favorites and stock up on them. So what a lot of people like to do, especially if they're brand new to freeze dried food or to Thrive Life is order that monthly specials pack at the beginning of the month. Then they can try everything and they still have time during the month while those things are still on sale to stock up on the family can size of the items that they really like. The other pack they have is the monthly specials fruit and veggie pack. And that usually has four cans of just fruits and veggies that are on sale because there's usually meats, cheeses and things like that on sale as well. So it's just fruits and veggies and you do get a little bit more of a discount on that too. So I got that pack this time because I didn't really want to grab a case of any one thing. I would have loved to grab a case of everything, but that would have been a little bit out of my budget. I love the spinach, but the last time it was on a really good sale, I did get a case of that. So I have quite a bit of that. A case of the family cans is six cans. A case of the pantry cans is 10. So the specials last month were the blueberries, the Fuji apples, the peas, and the spinach. So I got two of these packs. So I got two of each of these cans. I only put one up here. Then what I got up here is their gluten-free flour. Now I have one can of the gluten-free flour. I bought it a while ago because I thought I was going to try to develop some gluten-free recipes and I just haven't gotten around to it. We don't have to eat gluten-free, so I don't really have that motivation but i've had a lot of people in my meal in a jar group if you're in my meal in a jar group give me a fist bump emoji down in the comments i've had a lot of people in that group asking me questions about making recipes gluten-free so i really want to do some testing with this gluten-free flour and try to test some gluten-free recipes for people so i did order a case of the gluten-free flour six cans because like i said i have one can but i thought if i start doing some recipe testing i'm probably going to go through quite a bit of it because there's about 12 cups in one of these cans and so I could definitely go through that pretty quickly. So I got a case of the gluten-free flour. So be on the lookout, hopefully for some gluten-free recipes coming up in the future. If you have any favorite gluten-free recipes that you would like to see converted to meals in a jar, let me know down in the comments. And then I also got two cans of the diced chicken that was on sale in September. This is not my favorite chicken. If you watch the channel, you know I'm a little bit obsessed with the chicken slices but we do use this from time to time so i grabbed two cans of that and then i also got a case of the potato dices these are freeze-dried diced potatoes now you know with winter coming we're going to be doing a lot of stews and a lot of things like that and so these are going to be something i'm going to be using a lot 
So I grabbed a case of those. So the next few things I have right here are from Azure Standard. If you shop Azure Standard, you know how awesome they are. If you don't, check the description box below. I do have a link. You can go and check them out. I will put a link to the page where you can see if you have a drop near you, because a lot of times people will message me and say, oh, I really want to shop there, but the shipping is ridiculous. They do drops. And so what they do is they have a big truck that just shows up at a centralized location and people just unload all the stuff and divide it out and people get their own order off of that truck. I actually was fortunate enough to have a drop just about 10 minutes up the road from me. So, I'm, so I really feel thankful for that. But they have amazing quality standards. They have so much organic items and natural items. They don't carry anything with artificial colors, for example, and things like that. So, and they actually have really great prices. So it's kind of like shopping at a health food store with much better prices. So what I got this time is this is a gallon jug of red palm oil. I had never bought palm oil before, but what I read about this is that this is one of the healthiest oils you can get. This actually, it said has the highest antioxidant content of any oil, and it has a lot of beta carotene and vitamin E and responsibly sourced because funny story, shortly after I had purchased this and it was sitting in my kitchen, I picked my youngest daughter up from school and she came home and said she was going to boycott all candy. And I said, really, why? And she said, because we found out today, we learned that uh, most candy contains palm oil and that that is destroying the habitats of the orangutans and it's killing the orangutans and the tigers. And, and I just was sitting there thinking, oh gosh, like I've got um, a whole gallon of this sitting right at home. But I went home and we looked it up on the site and I showed her how it said it was um, responsibly sourced and things like that. I know when I get things from Azure Standard that I can really trust where they came from and how they were sourced because they're very conscious about things like that. And I'm not even sure how I really stumbled upon this red palm oil because it wasn't something that I really knew about before. But what I tend to do with Azure Standard is the same as Thrive Life. I go first, I go right to the sale items and I browse down the sale items and look at what's on sale. And so I think that that is how I found this oil. So the other thing that I got from them was this. This is a really pretty big bottle of spirulina powder, which is like an algae. And this is supposed to be a superfood. I remember when I was a teenager and I lived with my aunt and uncle, she used spirulina and things like smoothies. I think this is green spirulina. I can't tell and I can't remember, but they have blue and they have green and they make really beautiful colored um, smoothies and things like that, especially the blue um, spirulina. But this is actually in an amber glass bottle, which is a really good thing because light can really, really deteriorate your foods. And so the fact that I can't see this is a really good sign. But this is supposed to be a superfood, and I think this would be a really good thing to have to supplement your diet if you were in an emergency situation and you were lacking on fresh foods. And then, of course, I got this little box of kitchen twine. This can be for trussing up chickens and turkeys and things like that. I needed some twine for... Um, tying chickens up for my rotisserie and you can also use it for tying together um, little sacks of spices if you're putting them into something you're cooking lots of uses for this and of course this is organic and unbleached being from azure standard i know that it's going to be the best of the best so then my last bunch of stuff is some stuff from walmart now of course right back here we have the famous toilet paper it's almost become like a joke stocking up on toilet paper but it's still important you always need toilet paper and it's never going to go bad so buy that toilet paper. It's only getting more expensive. I have found for me the best deal I can get on toilet paper has been at Walmart so far. That's even better when I've compared it to Sam's Club and other things like that. And we don't have a Sam's Club close to us. Just like with these soups and things like that, depending on what stores you have, you may be able to get a better deal. But I found the best deal um, on this toilet paper at Walmart and we really like this. And then down here I've got a few pantry staples from Walmart. I've got some mild diced tomatoes with green chilies. This is the same as Rotel. I had not seen a great value um, mild version of Rotel before and so I was pretty excited to see this. We like Rotel, we like the regular Rotel, but every once in a while um, there's a recipe that I want to make a little bit less spicy for some reason. And so I like to have some of the mild on hand as well. So I've got six cans of those. And then of course back here, I've got four of these jars of salsa. Um, we like this salsa and this is one of the best deals I can find on salsa. We like to keep plenty on hand. We use it in recipes. We use it for snacking, all sorts of things. And this year I actually was unable to make any salsa homemade because we lost almost all of our tomato plants. You may remember our garden flooded and we lost a lot of our garden. And guys, that was a really um, good reminder about why we store food. You know, it's easy to say, well, I'll grow food, I'll grow my 
my own food and that's a great option to have but you can't count on that you can never count on that because you just never know what's going to happen with the weather and things like that so i am stocking up on salsa to make sure we have plenty i still have some homemade home canned from what i made i think last year or two years ago but i was planning to make some more and that just didn't happen. I've got a stack of these canning funnels. These canning funnels from Walmart are less than $2 a piece. They're right around $2 a piece. They're super cheap and I do, I do have several already. And of course I have my canning funnel that I really love for canning, the one that has the um, headspace measurements right on it. But I use these for my meals in a jar when you don't need to worry about headspace. And if you're making up meals in a jar in bulk, you know, making like six, 10, 12 jars at a time, Honestly, the hardest part of that, I think, is moving the funnel from jar to jar. So I thought for the price of $2 a piece, I would just buy some extra funnels so that it would be a lot easier. And then, of course, my canister sets. I get so many people asking me about these canister sets that I use. I did get um, four more sets of these. These are the ones that I buy. They're rectangular, and I buy this set of three, and this is the reason that I buy the set of three. My most commonly used size is the middle size, and then the next most commonly used size is that smaller size. You can buy the two biggest sizes on their own and you can even buy the middle size in a pack of four, but you cannot buy that smaller size on its own. I've never seen it sold on its own and I use those quite a bit. Those smaller canisters hold four cups. So they actually perfectly hold one of these cans. And so if I open up a can of something this size, I put it in that smaller canister. I use a lot of my um, little teeny pasta shapes. I will keep in a canister in a canister like that. There's a lot of things I keep in those smaller canisters. So I buy these sets of three to make sure that I have plenty of the small ones. The bigger ones are my least used size, but they are good for pasta and things like that. I get these at Walmart. So right now Walmart has this set on sale for $14.97, I believe which it's usually around $23. And so I'm trying to stock up on as many as I can while they're on sale. I will definitely have a link to this exact set down in the description box because I know I have people asking me about this all the time. And I do love these canisters. I started off using the square ones and then I realized that the rectangular ones were a much better use of space. They're longer so I can put them in a single layer on the shelf. I don't have to have one in front of the other, which I really don't like to do. And the way that they stack, they stack up so that two of the small ones equals one of the medium ones, a medium and a small equals the large, three of the smalls equals the large and so on and so forth. Okay guys, that's everything we've added to our preps and our prepper pantry this week. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and be a part of our next 50,000. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me a maple leaf emoji down in the comments and check out this playlist right up here to binge watch all of our prepper pantry hauls over the years. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.